kind of where we, uh, somewhere along where we were on Sunday, the Lord spoke to me some more about this. And that's all I wanted to do was share what the Lord gave me concerning this. Got a lot of exciting things coming up. Um, and then I'll share more later. Of course, we know some of the things, but there's even more exciting things coming up. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. This is Ephesians. So, remember, endeavoring. See, I'm going to let you see this word endeavoring. It's nice to see the... Uh, you know, the original language here. This is deep. It means to use speed. Use speed to keep unity. In other words, when you see the unity of the spirit, the fellowship of the brethren, the love of the saints, getting hurt, use speed to guard that and to fix it right away. To use speed, it means to be prompt or earnest. Yes. If you detect the enemy trying to break the unity of the spirit, mm -hmm. you block him out right away. Amen. And speak the love of God, speak the glory of God, the peace of God immediately. Amen. Due diligence, mm -hmm. endeavor, labor, and study to keep the unity. you got to labor to keep the unity of the Spirit. Amen. It's easy to go along with the gossipers. Mm. It's easy to go along with the haters. Jesus. Sometimes. Now, it's not easy if you've been walking in the light every day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Amen. If you've been walking with Jesus, it's not easy. Amen. See, but, but if you haven't been feeding your soul good enough, then it can become more easier to go along with something that can break the unity of the spirit. Endeavoring to keep, to guard, that means to guard from loss or injury. Our unity can get less or injured if we're not careful. The unity is the oneness that we have. See, we're going to look a little bit more at at the idea of unity and oneness. There is a unity that God is bringing to the church that our minds have not even found. Mm, There's a oneness coming Ooh, to the Jesus. people of God. Now, yes. they already experienced this in mm, heaven. Jesus. Most of the people in heaven already mm. know what this is about. Yes, Lord. When you're absent of the works of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the deeds of the flesh, envy, strife, jealousy, all that stuff, bitterness. There's none of that in heaven, glory to God. <laughs> They're in such unity, such oneness. Even what did God say in the beginning between a, a male and a female? It says, uh, God said, and they too shall be one flesh. For this cause shall a man leave his mother and father and shall cleave to his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. Not two flesh, one flesh. That's why I tell Moshia many times, hey, be careful what you do with my body right there. <laughs> but we become one flesh. We become one spirit, one flesh. Now, in the in the spirit, we 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 look to keep the unity of the spirit. Now, now this isn't no fleshly unity we're talking about here. When it comes to the body of Christ, now it's true that the husband and wife become one flesh. See, but when God made Adam and Eve, they yes they were in the flesh, but their flesh was more spiritual than fleshly at the time. Man. They, were, they were already walking in the spirit, children of God Almighty. But so now what happens in the church, we must keep, we must labor to guard the unity of the spirit. <laughs> now, you know what spirit he's talking about is the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
This unity is a unity that, that is found in heaven. This unity is a oneness that they experience in heaven because it's from the Spirit of God. Amen. See, his idea of unity is much higher and better and more keener and more powerful than any other idea of unity that, that we can fathom in this earth. See, we even preach the gospel with the Holy Spirit who has come down from heaven, the Bible says. We have with us a heavenly comforter, friend, Amen. the Holy Spirit who fills us, who fills our lives. So this is a heavenly um, unity he's talking about. Now, we're, you know, there's so many things in the word that talk about how we shall all become one. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he may gather together in one all things, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him. So there is a oneness or a unity. Now, what happened uh, in the Tower of Babel? You remember after the flood, they begin to build this tower. Something happened there where all of a sudden, they God uh, caused them to all get disunified. Amen. Amen. They begin to all speak in different languages. Amen. Isn't that something? Yes. <laughs> and a disharmony happened in the earth. There's disharmony right now between those people that are trying to kill people in the Middle East right now. Amen. You got several groups, vicious groups. You got one so vicious hmm. that the previous vicious group said, no, they're a little too vicious for us even. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about Al-Qaeda said that ISIS, they don't even condone ISIS. And Al-Qaeda was the ones that bombed America, hmm. you know, tried to destroy America on the 9-11 uh, back in, what was that, 2001, I think. So, that's disunity. That's disharmony. Wars and rumors of wars. Nation against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. We're, we're in a battle. Even, even um, the human race is in a battle against spiritual wickedness. Jesus. Demonic forces. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood as believers. Amen. Now, some people think that that's all they, they have is flesh Amen. and blood. You know, they're not even thinking about this, the the life of the spirit. But we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against the principalities, the powers, the rulers of this darkness. So, Amen. what God is doing with the people of God, He's bringing us into a divine oneness. See, it says, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints to help perfect us for the work of the ministry, for the building up, the construction of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith. That's why you're seeing a mass movement of churches being raised up that don't carry a denominational name. You know, Joel Osteen and different churches. You know, this is the move of the Spirit of God. Just bringing believers together. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. 1 and 9. And he says, actually, don't go at nine. Go down to two and nine. Two and nine. Yeah, first one was two. Even though my go down one. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared.
inherit for them that love him. Amen. Now, the ideas that God has, I, I, I found out, are far greater than man's ideas. Amen. The riches that God has are far greater than man's riches. Amen. Far better in every way. <coughs> Um, and eye has not even seen. So the human eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. Now, these are things that are, that are in the heavenly realm. These are things that God has prepared for those that love him. Remember what Jesus said before he went away. He said, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. He said, if it were not so, I would tell you so. He said, but I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. So, there is things being prepared for us that are, that, that are, our eyes have never seen in this earth. Our ears have not heard. Haven't entered our heart. Because we love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. See, so it's that it's the spirit of God. We're, we're endeavoring to keep the unity that the Holy Spirit is bringing. So even though in the earth people are not used to what God has prepared for us, it's the Holy Spirit that we already have here revealing these things to us. Amen? He's giving us taste of glory. He's giving us, see, when, when we lift our hands in the sanctuary and we worship Him together, there's a unity that comes. Allowing us to taste and see how good he is. There's an experience we have in those moments. We wouldn't think of going out and doing something evil. We wouldn't think of cussing someone out or, or, or doing dirty deeds, you know, in the flesh. See, it's by his spirit. He's revealing what heaven is all about. Giving us glimpses and, and, and taste of his glory. What about when we learn to walk in the Spirit 24 7? Amen. Jesus. See, that's what God is bringing us to. Jesus. We experience that time of unity and fellowship of the brethren. See, the Bible says how pleasant it is for a brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the oil that dripped down from Aaron's burnt beard. Yes. The ointment. Jesus. Of the anointing, this is uh, found in the book of Psalms. But we experience the outpour of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about something supernatural, glory to God. Something beyond your human eyes or ears. Something that we can't adequate, adequately explain in human words, but we experience it. When we, that's why it's so important that we come together in the house of the Lord. That's why it's so important for the women as they're doing, coming and praying in the morning. It will be a time when the church will have to be open every day for something. Either prayer or fellowship. Studying in the word. People getting built up in the spirit. You might have some people that just won't move into the church, glory to God. <laughs> Most likely when we get a bigger church, you know. <laughs> Amen. We'll have room for people to live in. Amen. Those rooms will be for, for, the, for the prayer warriors Jesus. that will come out and just pray. <laughs> glory to God. Oh, Jesus. Thank, right. you, Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But we're, we're coming more and more into a place where that Spirit of God that we feel in the sanctuary. We'll be feeling him 24 7. Hallelujah. 
See, the Bible says, but the anointing that you received of him abides in you, stays in you, Jesus. continues with you. Mm. And he teaches you of all things. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The same spirit is, is in you. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he, he doesn't belong to him, the Bible says. Mm. You have the spirit of God working in you, living in you. Now, so when we come together, it's it's an experience of an outpour, of an infusion. It's like bringing power sources together and combining them. And that's why the atmosphere gets so charged. Everyone's angels come with them, beings of light from heaven. Jeez. Our lights begin to burn, angels all around, the presence of God, Jesus walking in the midst, and it's a it's a powerful experience. That's why you can be healed so quickly. In the operation of the times when we come together and worship, God God does it in those times because people's faith is boosted and the and the gifts of the Spirit begin to operate. So those things that God has in heaven, he reveals them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Even the profound, deep things of God, the spirit of God has searched them. He knows them because he is God. Yes, 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 yes. So he's in the midst, revealing mysteries and divine understanding of things that, that professors can't speak of. Institutions of, I don't care if it's Yale or Harvard. Oh, they can't touch the things of the Spirit of God. The things of the Spirit are foolishness to them and they can't know them because these things are only revealed by the Spirit of God. God chooses the humble. He chooses the, the little ones to understand the deepest things. He chooses the little praying women to experience the greatest things, the most powerful things in this whole earth. That's the power of prayer. Hallelujah. Power to decree in prayer. Just little humble little women. Glory to God. They're in the most powerful position in this earth. They're going to be seated in the greatest places of heaven. Those who will humble themselves now and receive the power of the Spirit of God. Those who will put nothing in front of the presence of the Lord and the power of His Spirit. Oh, the, to feel Him every day. To walk in His ways every day. You don't do nothing now. Check this out, saints. You even don't want to break the unity of the Spirit of God between you and Him. You endeavor to keep the unity, the oneness between you and His vibrant presence. When you wake up in the morning, you recognize Him. And he acknowledges you by letting you feel his glory. And you endeavor to keep that unity all day. You endeavor to guard that unity between you and Jesus. So when the devil tries to bring different things on TV or whatever, you can be watching the news in the morning and they want to feature... One of those singers out there. All of a sudden, the wrong spirit will try to get through. Spirit of God will, will let you know. Okay, now it's time to turn that off. <laughs> Let's keep the unity between us flowing. It can be just you and God. You and Jesus. Something that tries to make the flesh now rise up. You say, oh no, I'm keeping the unity of the spirit, the oneness of the spirit. I'm going to stay in the spirit. See, God will honor you for that. 
You labor to keep the unity. You keep that stuff off your TV. You refuse to gossip. You refuse to break that unity between you and God, you and Jesus, that fellowship, that oneness. So you become one with him, so you actually begin to think what he's thinking, to feel what he feels. You can have that oneness with him where when you're in a situation and something could be going on, you'll feel what Jesus feels. You'll feel grieved when he feels grieved. You'll feel joy when he's feeling happy. So he searches all things, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? So, in other words, what does a man, I mean, who knows a man except that spirit of that man that is in him? In other words, you know yourself better than any of us know you. You know what you're thinking. You know what's going on with you. Even so, the things of God know of no man but the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will bring to light what's going on in God's mind, in God's heart. That's how, why he has the gift of prophecy to reveal a mystery of what God is thinking of. So it's the gifts of the Spirit. It's an endowment of the Spirit to bring that out. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. Look, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. That we might comprehend and be aware of of the things that are given to us of God. We haven't received the spirit of the world from God. But we received the spirit of God, which is far greater in joy, far greater in pleasure, far greater in all knowledge and wisdom. The things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak. See, the things of God are given to the church, are given to the people of God, so we speak them. God, God's thinking, I'm going to heal someone, so that's why it's spoken. God is saying the answer is done, so we speak it. See, not in words which man's wisdom teach. See, the doctor might say, you got to go through your six months of therapy. You got to take this medication every morning or every evening. But the Holy Ghost is saying, it's done, glory to God. But which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Healing is a done deal. Your deliverance has been sealed. You've been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of Christ. That's reality. That's what the Spirit of God will teach you. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. The sensual man. I mean sensual. People that go by their senses. See, when you're operating in the gifts of the Spirit, your senses don't have anything to do with what God is speaking. God will give you Compare spiritual things with spiritual. That's how the gifts of the spirit work. God will take over your natural senses, glory to God. And cause you to operate in a higher realm where the spirit of God is dominating. And, and that's when the, when the gifts of the spirit are working. And in your everyday life. But the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. That word foolishness means silliness and absurd, absurdity. See, the natural man thinks the things in the spirit of God are foolishness. That's what God made. He chose the foolish things 
to confound the wise. If you're going to walk in the spirit, you may not get much approval from man. You may not get much congratulations from man if you're going to go with the things of the spirit. Because it's silly just in a natural mind. But you, you begin to move out of the natural mind and you begin to do things that are silly. Someone says that they can't walk. So you do something silly in the name of Jesus. You grab them by the hand and you pull them up and they begin to walk and shout and leap all over the place. Oh God. In an instant, God can do it. And he says, for they are foolishness, and neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The natural man doesn't know the things of the Spirit of God. We're, we're living in a different dimension with the Spirit. The Bible says, those that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. When you're led by the Spirit of God, Led, prompted. You move by the Spirit of God. Flesh could have been telling some people, you worked all week, or maybe they didn't work all week. Maybe they were just busy all week. Flesh could be telling people, why don't you just go out to eat Friday night? The Spirit of God is saying, I got food prepared for you over there on 71st in California. I got a meal prepared for you. That's beyond what your taste buds can taste. In the natural. See, but the flesh can dominate some people and, and tell them all kinds of things. Just rest and then just stay home. Um, you know, and it could be unreasonable, you know. Some things, you know, are are reasonable, you know. Like Sister Machine, she got to be at work at 6 a.m. in the morning, so she got to get up at like 4 30. So I understand, you know, what she had to do tonight. But, um, you know, it could be you didn't even work all week, and plus, we telling you, nah, just chill tonight, you'll be fine. Have you not even think about what's going on? In the kingdom. You see? But not knowing that that when you enter into the realm of the spirit. Yes, Lord. See, you can be feeling tired even before church. I can almost guarantee you. On a Friday night, spirits of tiredness go out from the kingdom of darkness and try to hit everyone that they can hit. Try to make them real tired. Yeah. Real sleepy. More sleepy than, I mean, you got to felt this sleepy all week. <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday night, you were up still at almost, almost midnight watching movies and just wide awake and eating popcorn. <laughs> now come Friday, 6 p.m., flesh, you know, the, the, the devil will instigate the flesh. Have you almost walking like a zombie so sleepy? Can't go <laughs> Something just hit you and you don't know what. Someone calls. Hello? <laughs> hey, hey, you going to church tonight? I'm out. Church, what? I, I don't know. I don't know. You know? Just, just out of it, you know? With that, with that flesh just dominating, you know? Just so you'd miss out on the things of the Spirit of God. But if you take that tiredness, yes. say, yeah, church, I'm just going to go, glory to God. And you just make your way. That Spirit will break. Even while you're on your way, you'll start feeling something good, you know? <laughs> now what I do, praise God, I'll try to get me a good nap in before church. 
I got me a good 15 to 18 minutes to make it for it, but, but it was just enough what I needed. <laughs> it was good enough. I, man, I caught it. Sister Mashiach called me right in the middle of it, and I barely could answer that phone. And she said, oh, you sleeping? She said, yeah. So she knows what I'm doing, so she got off pretty quick. Got me another good four minutes in. It was awesome. <laughs> And the alarm ringing. <laughs> no, no. Then I then I heard someone knocking at the door. They said, Sister Linda said she's coming. I said, okay, that means I gotta cut this little short. <laughs> That's what happened. Before the alarm even woke up. <laughs> See, I had about a good 25 minutes coming, but it, it got cut down to about 15 to 18. <laughs> See, I learned, hey, take that nap a little before. Sometimes I'll take it early, you know, more like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. <clears throat> but I was over there seeing Andrew today. Today's Andrew's birthday, by the way. Praise God. He turned 20. Mm. So, um, yeah, it was exciting to see him. God is working in him. Mm. He got a new message ready to come. Mm. What is it? I think he says something about the unconditional love of God. Mm. So I can't wait till that comes forth. And, um, and the devil really tried to buffet him lately. But he'd been, he been standing for Jesus. <laughs> but they've been coming against it with unbelievable pressure. Most people couldn't take that kind of pressure. And he didn't do nothing wrong just for serving God. A, a demonic attack. Getting into, getting into those uh, people. And But we prayed today, you know, but he was, he was doing fine. But, um, amen. Uh, you can tell he, he had been through something, you know. <laughs> but we all got to go through something, amen? amen? When you go through stuff like that, God is doing a purification in you. Putting up that pressure real good. <laughs> so anything that's not supposed to be there can rise up to the surface and come out. <laughs> so it's all good. It all works together for our good, amen? Oh, God is so good. Yes, Amen. We've all been through those times of extreme pressure, I'm sure. And 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 if you can, if you can keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, and that, see that's the key. And then you keep the anointing of God. You don't get in the flesh. You don't start acting in the flesh. You don't start taking measures into your own hands. It's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. You learn to that to give it over to the Lord to trust in the power of the Spirit of God. Instead of taking it into your own hands. Some people just lose their mind. You know, I feel sorry for unsaved people that don't even have Jesus in their life. And when pressure hits them, sometimes they just lose their mind. Just do crazy stuff. Go out and kill someone. Stuff like that. Out of vengeance and hate, you know. Or break in somewhere. And, you know, do just... The flesh will have you doing all kinds of crazy stuff in, in your own natural mind. <laughs> Plotting stuff in the flesh. Not knowing the Spirit of God got a better way. God can say, stand still, for the battle is not yours. Stand still and you'll see the glory of God. Hold your peace. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Don't fret yourself over him that prospers in his own way. But trust in the Lord with all your heart. Delight yourself also in him and he shall bring it to pass. You don't even have to understand it. See, the way the Spirit of God moves, he'll say, don't even worry. Don't be anxious. Give it to me. Cast it on me. Don't try to figure it out. Glory to God. And that's the way you'll get the victory. <laughs> By you not trying to figure it out. By you not trying to plot and do your own stuff. Give it over to the Spirit of God. Get into the mode of the Spirit. How do you, how do you get the, the power of the Spirit more, more upon you? That's easy. Just get on your knees and, and begin to pray. Begin to call on His name. Begin to call out to Jesus. Get you the Bible and begin to open up that Bible. Mm. Just settle yourself down and, and begin to meditate. 
Psalms 1 says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. I'm going to put it up here. The Spirit of God is gave me this. Yes, yes. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. You don't get your counsel. You don't get your your um, your encouragement. From ungodly minded people. Amen. Amen. From people that don't know Jesus. Could be your own mama or your own dad or you know. <laughs> and if they've never known Jesus or they're not walking in, in the spirit, they might give you the wrong advice. I'll tell you what I would do. I would take that. I would do this or that, you know, and that's the counsel of the ungodly. But blessed is the man that doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, the law of love, the law of grace, the law of forgiveness, the law of peace. And in his law does he meditate day and night. See, day and night. That's how you experience the power of the Spirit of God. Continuously, you're thinking on the law of the Lord day and night. Meditating, pondering. Every situation that comes up, you ponder what is the law of the Lord say? What is the word of God say? What is the Spirit of God say? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. I'm telling you, the people of God become trees that are planted by the rivers of God. It might look like people are prospering. It might look like the ungodly have risen up and, and that they got, they got the wealth and they got the power and they got this and that. But trust me, the meek shall inherit the earth. We, as we meditate in the Word of God, we're going to end up like a tree planted by the rivers of water because we've been meditating in the law of the Lord. We haven't taken matters into our own hands. We haven't used spite for spite or railing for railing. But rather, we've been blessing. We've been loving. We've been forgiving. We've been, while people have been shooting arrows of hate and, and, and arrows of division, You've been sending letters of love and words of wisdom and words of kindness. That's the law of Jesus. Love your enemies. Pray for them that despitefully use you. We're talking about people that have despite and envy and hatred against you and you pray for them and you bless them. You're, you're going to end up like a tree by the rivers and waters while those people that are operating in hate shall wither. They shall dry up. They shall fail as, as the grass that comes and then goes. Those that are operating in their own strength. Those that are, that, that are operating in the ways of man. But the righteous shall flourish. And, and they shall bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Shall prosper. He's not just saying, you know, that you're just going to make all kinds of money. Now, when you're when you walk in the ways of the Lord, that can happen. But but God takes His people in the right way. Some people He knows He can't just drop, you know, large sums of money in them. 
God bless some, someone on a, on a Saturday with a large sum of money come Sunday. Now, they've been coming Sunday for the last two years. Every Sunday, not missing. God dropped a large sum of money. Hey, where's Sister So-and-So? <laughs> Come, you know, people calling, no answer, because they're they just got caught up in the money. It won't be long until they blow it off. Some months later, they'll end up back poor, broke, and miserable. <laughs> but whatsoever you do shall prosper. See now, you can prosper even without a lot of money in the bank. Amen. Amen. God could be making your way. And you don't even see the funds built up like, like the ungodly might have a lot of fun sometimes. Oh, see, but you begin to find the true delight in the presence of God, the true trust. Jesus becomes so real to you that you know he won't fail you. Glory to Jesus. You begin to walk by faith and not by sight, and you begin to experience the true riches of God. Yes, Lord. Spirit of God will reveal true things into your spirit. Glory to Jesus. Spirit of God can lead you. Since I'm going to share a little quick testimony. I have, I, I have been looking for, uh, for a way to make money, you know, because I need money. <laughs> And um, I almost got, well, I did go, actually, to start this training at this one place where they, they train you, you know, to be salespeople, to um, get people to buy, you know, new bathroom stuff, you know, bathtub stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it, it looked good in the natural, it seemed sensible, you know. You make a lot of money and different things like that. It was in my, my own town where, where, where their office was and stuff. So, the night before, I was to go to the training. Now, I'm going for training for a sales job. So, you know, and they dress in suits and, suits and ties and stuff. And just the sales work, you, you're going to go into people's homes and stuff. So, this was the training. Night before, I dream that I was working in a warehouse and my cell phone, <laughs> um, this cell phone, while I was working, the cell phone had to be hung up on a nail. And it was hung up on a little nail, just like that. Now, how many of you know, these are not just cell phones, these are life aids these days. <laughs> I've been calling these our life aids that God God sent this idea from heaven. Because you can do anything. You can send emails, watch movies, you know, watch videos, record church services, you know. <laughs> you do a lot with these things these days. And in the in the in the dream, mine was hanging on a nail and there was a little hole that I didn't know, but there was like a a, a stream of gas that was coming out where my cell phone was, and it was going right in the back of the cell phone. And while I was working, that stuff was getting into the cell phone, and the cell phone burst out like that, and foam began to come out, and it was all like, like it exploded and expanded, and you couldn't use it anymore. And then when I saw it, I'm like, oh man, what's going on? And I went to find the bosses. Now, I had seen the bosses because I went Wednesday for orientation and then started the training Monday. So it was that. They were, they were in a room there, and I was going to talk to them about it, but they didn't care nothing about it. Then, as, as I'm standing there, it fell, and there was a, a crack in the floor. It fell right through the hole, and I lost my phone. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I can't find it. Next thing I know... I'm in my house, and there's a big closet, and it got messed up. Clothes just piled up and just messed up. And Mushia was pushed up in the closet, laying upside down almost. 
she, she, had, she, had became, she got pushed aside into this closet, and, and, and there was two other strange people in that closet, all pushed up in the closet, too. I, I don't know who those other two people were. <laughs> And that was the dream. So, it didn't take me long. Now, that was the day before I started the training, you know, the night before. So, I get up that morning, and I'm thinking about that dream. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. I go to this training. They said, if you want to bring a lunch, bring a lunch, and they'll have, they have a microwave there, you know, or you can go out. So, I was the only one that brought a lunch, you know, because I'm real drifty. So. <laughs> Hand me some homemade chili <laughs> and some crackers. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone left out, and I'm trying to find someone for a few minutes. Finally, I saw someone because they, they they got out so quick. I'm like, hey, you said you guys got a microwave? They're like, yeah, right through the doors. I step out, and what do I step out into? A big warehouse. But you don't start a drink. Yeah. <laughs> It says right to the left. So the microwave was in the warehouse. It wasn't even in the off room. It was in the warehouse. And so I had to put the food in there at least for about two minutes. So as it's cooking, I'm standing like the warehouse. Oh my God, what are you, what are you saying to me? And so I'm looking at this warehouse and I'm getting revelations about other things. And then you know, I go back in, you know, afterwards, and God began to deal with me real strong. <laughs> God revealed to me that if I was to take that job. See, now, in that training, after that lunch, they, they sent a new guy, and he began to say that you got to be on call basically six days a week from like 8 in the morning till about 7.30 p.m. So he said, and... And when we call you for a sales thing where you got to go, you got to be there within an hour and a half, and it can be up to 115 miles away. And he said, and we don't want to hear that you just sat down to dinner with your wife or you you just went to the movie. They said, don't give me none of that blank, blank stuff. <laughs> and little by little, all through that training, they were getting more oppressive and oppressive. Like, And, and I could tell there was like brain, like the systematic brainwashing going on. So God revealed to me the, the mystery of the dream that God knows that I call these our life aids. In other words, if I was to take that job, my life would have been hung up on a nail. <laughs> oh. And then busted up, infected with their poison. Because it was like a poisonous gas that got in there. Just messed up everything. My wife would have been pushed aside in the closet. <laughs> And I got the re the full revelation as I was talking to Sister Machine. They gave you water. You want me? So God God gave the the clear interpretation. I said, and 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 I was in marvel of that for a couple days. I I even told Sister Machine yesterday. I said, Isn't God good to give me that dream? I said, You would have been pushed aside in the closet. My life would have been messed up. But that's the power of the Spirit of God. Glory to Jesus. He knows how to keep you out of trouble. I mean, that was amazing. What, how he revealed that. So after that day, I left and didn't come back. I felt so good. See, because whatsoever we do in Christ shall prosper. I don't know what God got for me around the corner, but something's coming. Amen. Amen. I, I don't know which way. See, sometimes you just don't know. Mm. I was telling Andrew about that because he said, I just want to know what God has for me. I said, sometimes you can't see it. Mm. Sometimes it looks worse before the blessing is coming. Mm. So usually it's going to get much worse mm. be, before you're sitting by the rivers of water and flourishing with the fruit. Mm. <laughs> See, and whatever you do will prosper. See, you can prosper with less money more than the wicked can prosper with a whole lot of money. Because you got the true riches. Yes. But, see, God is getting us ready so that money don't affect us. 
Why? So he can put millions of dollars in your bank account. So and in our bank account, so we can flood the TV with more Christian TV. Mm. Flood the radios with more Christian radio. Amen. Amen. Big bigger buildings for the souls yes. for the great harvest to yes. come in. It's gonna take a lot of money. But if you're connected with money and you love money, he can't trust you with a lot of money. But he's showing us the true riches so that when that when when he needs to put all that money in your power, you're gonna take it and you're gonna see it as a tool for the glory of God. You're not gonna be out touring the world in France and going through England and all on vacation and fine dining and spending all your money like that. Now, God may give you to, of course, go out and get some rest sometimes and do something like that, but that's not going to be your whole life. But it says, whatever we do will prosper. And it says, the ungodly are not so. But are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. And therefore, it says, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So, we want God's way, man. God's prosperity is so much better. God's spirit is so much more riches. The spirit of God is here to lead us in God. Amen. When you consult with the Lord, he won't fail. When you put your trust in him, you delight yourself in him, he's not going to let you down. He'll give you a dream. He'll give you a vision. He will speak through prophecy. He's going to lead and guide you. The more you get wrapped up in Jesus, the more you invite him, him to shine and to be your friend every day. Keeping that oneness between you and him. Caring what he cares about. He cares about souls. He cares about the lost. He cares about broken people. And when you when you get to know him more, you're gonna you will you will feel more and more compassion for people. You'll feel more and more that if God is sending people to you, He's entrusting you to help heal them. See, sometimes. God can God God will send broken people, messed up people your way. And if you're in the flesh, you're gonna think they're a bother. You're gonna think they're trouble. But God is putting them in your way to see how you're gonna reach out and bring the healing power of Jesus to them. To to receive those people. See, the, that's the, those are the ones God cares about. Jesus said that, that those that are whole don't need a physician, but those that are sick. So whenever God sends sick people, messed up people, confused people your way, look at that and say, God, is this an opportunity? Are you, are you sending them my way? Because you want to make them whole? Jesus entered a city and found a man that was naked, running around the tombs, and they tried to bind him with chains, and he was bound with thousands of demons. Jesus. Jesus didn't turn him away. Jesus. He commanded those demons to come out, and that man became uh, sound Jesus. and clothed and in a sane mind. These are the things Jesus cares about. He cares about people. He cares about you walking in the love of God. You walking with him and knowing him. And you letting your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify the Father every day. That God can entrust you with the power of his spirit. So that he could begin to send you in, even into different places among different people where you don't know how to affect that atmosphere with his, with his goodness. Where you don't just act good in church. You don't just act godly in church. But you could be in your job and God can entrust you with influence 
to bring influence to those people in your job. Where when they come to you with different stuff, talking about different stories of how they did this Friday night and that, you say, man, you should have been where I was Friday night. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, where were you? I was at the great father's house. Father's house. Yeah, I was at God's house. Among God's people. Experiencing Jesus. See, and he, he'll make you, he'll give you a platform to speak. Yes, Lord. Because people will know you by your fruit. You'll already have gained their trust because when you walked in them, walked in every morning you greeted them. You were kind to them. See, you were showing Jesus 24-7, walking in the light. Any anytime you walk by, they felt something. And they didn't feel something. They didn't feel animosity, strife, confusion with you. But when you walked by, it was a fresh breeze, a fresh wind that just passed by them. So later on, when they talked to you and when you spoke, see, you can tell a fool by his many words. You know, <laughs> people just gabbing all the time. Oh, they already know you, you know, they don't want to hear you. But a, but a man of wisdom has fewer words. But people notice, hey, peace, like, you're not involved with the strife, you're not involved with the gossip, you're just walking in integrity, respecting everyone, loving everyone, kind, joyful at the same time. All the attributes of God. Being joyous and peaceful, loving. And then when you do speak, words of wisdom. That's how people are drawn to Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> how many of you want that glory to hit you tonight? She called up Osanda Lord, release a portion of your glory upon each one. Release, release, release. Release, she called Osanda Rahate. Release upon him. Release upon Jeremy. Oh, son, that I have to. Go, get ready, man. Get ready, get ready. Release right now. Oh, son, that I have to. Release. Release right now. The glory. Release. Oh, son, that I have to. Receive a release of the glory of God. A special release. Release right now. Woo. Son, that I have to. Release right now. Release right now. Woo! Double see. Glory to God. Oh, glory. It's His glory coming down. The majesty of the Lord our God. Coming down, coming down. 